And when you're working with strobes, you can't lay on the motor drive until you're dealing with like big pro photo airs or brawn colors that can like keep up with your motor drive. Uh, Chase Jarvis, he's got uh, a video um, where he was shooting for uh, SanDisk, I believe. Chase, are you still in the building? Hey, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, when you, that was SanDisk, you were shooting the skiers and you had to have a strobe that would keep up with your, your motor drive, right? Because you needed them boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, grab a microphone. Chase Jarvis, everybody. <laughs> totally putting you on the spot. I got cookies in my teeth, sorry. Bro. Right, so uh, I'm speaking specifically of the SanDisk job you did, uh -huh. of the snowboarders, where you needed them boom, 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 yep. boom, 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 boom in the shot, and mm -hmm. you needed a strobe that would like Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Because At you needed nine frames a second. Right. You didn't need a one single peak moment. You needed a sequence. Correct amundo. And so, we did stitch that together in post production, but right. we shot mm -hmm. it as one. Yeah. Right. You didn't shoot the peak moment here and then the peak moment here and because they that'd take you what all day? Yeah, so and <laughs> yeah, and it wouldn't be very it wouldn't be very smooth. The transitions right. you'd have to rely on luck. So we motor drive through the whole thing and we actually had people pointing the strobes, we use the bronze color strobes because they can keep up with right. uh, nine frames a second. So. And those were not alien bees that you were using. Correct. They, Correct. Yeah, I so, have, check respect it out. for alien bees, but there's they're a country mile between the. Right, yeah. exactly. So I shoot this picture and then this picture, boom, boom, and I lose my main light because it didn't recycle fast enough, right? Now I'm in here with bronze colors, or I'm in here with the big pro photo air systems, then boom, boom. And I've got it because those things, like you can have Club Europe going on with those, right? It's, it's, you can have a dance party with those lights. Yeah, it's really weird that you, as a, at least as a photographer, I recall very clearly my evolution where I used to like, why do these people need all these, you know, fancy flashes? You know, I could just pop and then I would, I'd actually I would look at the back of my camera because that was in film days. <laughs> you opened it up, right? <laughs> right. But it. I remember pop and then you'd move your model and pop. But as you become more comfortable as a photographer, as, as I became more comfortable. And I wanted to shoot faster and faster and faster. And then you start relying on, you shoot a picture, and then it's the moment after the model goes like that. And then that's actually the real moment. So you got to be able to fire again. So right. as you get more comfortable, that's, I think, why more professional or, or higher end lights are used by, um, I don't know, people that are shooting in that capacity or that fashion. Right, right, exactly. So if you have gear that's limiting you, right? Like, I love alien bees, they're great. I could pick, take one, kick it across the floor, and I'd still use it. And if I couldn't use it anymore, it's a $300 light. It's not a $3,000 light, you know, kind of thing. So I throw them in the belly of an airplane. If, I'd hate if they all got crushed, but if they did, then it's not a huge replacement. You, you watch $3,000, $10,000 worth of lights go down and there's a bigger pucker factor. And it's a lot about your shooting style too. Like you're right. really methodical. I remember when you shot, had like a kite the last, the last creative life workshop, you were really methodical with posing them and whatnot. Right. And, and versus something like what I was doing in New Zealand where like I'm having to chase these guys all over the sky. Right. Where I need to be ready at any, at a, at a one one thousandth of a second. And so different strobes will be different for different shooting styles exactly. too. Exactly. And it comes back to knowing your gear, knowing your gear, you know what it does, and you know what it won't do. And when that job shows up of, hey, I need you to shoot snowboarders in a sequence flying across the sky, you go, I need new lights. I need a different pack, right? So when I'm shooting stuff like this, I know I have to wait for the moment. And I'm trying that's to That's the moment right there, that. look at that. That's not bad. But here, I wanna show, um, I think that's kinda, that's kinda cool. It's beautiful. So you, yeah. It reminds me of that Michael Jordan wings Pose where he right. stood there. And I got it finally where oh, he yeah. was that there. Mark. That one. Um, yeah. Thanks, Thanks buddy. All right. Aye. Thanks for jumping in. Short notice. Okay. So uh, I wanted to see if I had one in particular here. Okay. Check this out. Look at this shoe. Again, knowing your gear. If I was going to be a full time dance photographer, I wouldn't shoot Alien Bees. There's a thing called flash duration, how long those lights are on. And the Alien Bees, as great of flashes as they are, um, then they're, they're fantastic because they're super affordable and they're, they're consistent pretty much. But the amount of time that flash is on, pop and turn off, is actually pretty long, long enough that I get blur. See that motion blur? Yes. Have you been able to track 
Einstein? I have not shot with the Einstein yet. Uh, the Einstein from Alien B is supposedly supposed to have a, a faster flash duration. So the faster the flash duration, the, m the more that would be sharp. And I know full-time dance photographers, like all they shoot are dancers. They wouldn't choose Alien Bees because they have to shoot people in the air moving all the time and they want it tack sharp and they have to go buy lights that have fast durations and that costs money and it comes back down to business. Now you're just shooting headshots and portraits and whatever, alien bees are fine. You got people flying through the air and you need them to be tack sharp, it's not the light for you. What about the flash duration on a speed light, like a hot shoe? They'll be faster. Yeah. especially as you go lower in flash power. Output. As your flash power comes down, your duration gets faster, typically with most lights. Um, so yeah, but then again, I needed to be shooting this at like F8. I needed because I'm focusing and he may, where I focus, he may move a foot or forward or back. And if I bring those flash durations of hot shoe flashes down in power, mm -hmm. then I might be shooting at F4 right, because there's not a whole lot of light coming out of them. Yeah. And so I'm shooting at F4, and then maybe I need to bump, bump up my ISO to bring my aperture back up, and now it's getting noisy, and so it's, now you hand me a $5,000 light kit that has a fast flash duration and gives me F8 or F11 on this, great. But we're at four or $5,000. No, I, I, I find this flash conversation really interesting because a lot of the um, the commentary online is about like, oh, this is just all show and a bunch of BS. Like, they don't need all these lights. They could do it. You know, Joe McNally does it with eight speed lights. I love Joe. He's a dear friend of mine. But the things that, like what you were just talking about, that sand is it can't physically be done with speed lights. They, there's not enough power. There's not, they can't recycle fast enough. They can't, the flash duration is not short enough. The, the um, I mean, there's a, they don't generate enough enough watt seconds there's a million reasons and the it's usually a lack of understanding of what the actual task at hand is and that's i think that's what you're doing a great job of explaining is there are different it's like different tools for different jobs and when you look at what an alien bee can do it's a great tool for a particular job and the one that you just outlined but the, the example that you used is a perfect one is if you were a full-time dance photographer that's not going to cut it. Mm -mm. And, and so thinking that because there is a mechanism that throws light on an object, that all those mechanisms are the same, is the same mislogic as thinking that all camera bodies are created the same, or that a phantom camera that shoots at 1,200 frames a second is the same as, the, as one of these Sony cameras. There's, there are d always different tools for different jobs. Some tools you can fudge into different directions, or usually a super high-end tool you can fudge into a lower end need, like anything that the, the alien bee could do, um, except cost $300 is, is probably, it's the, like that could do that job, but these cheaper, smaller lights can't always do the job of the, the pro stuff. And I don't blame people for not understanding that because I, I was guilty of the same right. thing, but that's just, and, it's an interesting and, discussion, I think. And, it, and people online, I see them like talking trash all the time, like this is just for show. It's like. Not at all for no. show. Because if you're sitting there waiting for your battery to recharge, and the client's looking over your shoulder, and the model's on the seamless. And how much money is sitting on that set at that, yeah. that time? The yeah. crew, the travel, yeah. the, the logistics. The and expenses. if you miss photographs, you know what I mean? Like we're talking about here when it's not recycling fast enough. That's really acceptable in this environment, or even in a headshot environment. But like you said, when you start piling a bunch of money and a bunch of pressure, and oh, this is the perfect shot, but the strobe didn't recycle fast enough. Right that's when it becomes kind of not, accept, not uh, acceptable. So. Right, and you're standing there in front of your client having to make excuses for your gear. Yeah, right. And, and, and you've done a beautiful job also, I feel like, of articulating that most often people want new gear before they reach their, the, they, before they max out what the gear is, put, is possible, it's possible to do with the gear because of that we're being marketed to or whatever. But, in reality, if you are bumping up against those, those walls, the limitations of your gear, that's a great time, the next time one of those jobs comes along, to make the investment and, and actually upgrade. And if you're not bumping up against the limitations of your gear, then 
my spending you're money. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved your conversation about ISO. Great things. Like if you're walking around and you're an outdoor shooter and you, you a D100 is probably fine. But if you're a concert photographer, you need 1600 or 3200. That's a great example of why you need that gear, not just for the sake of wanting to spend five grand or right. hawking your children or whatever it takes to get the money. Right. Hawking your children. That was a double entendre. Yeah. <laughs>